super duper duper so vicky thank you how are you yeah good thank you tracy hi uh, welcome here and I'm really really grateful that you've decided to come on here and tell um, me and those that watch it about your um, your journey your journey from leaving something to coming into Perk Cosmetics and the success you've had so far so these this this video is really all about demonstrating to those that are watching about you know the success stories um, and yours is certainly one of those. So thank you so much for that. But I think it'd be really good if you just, first of all, say who you are. Obviously, I've said Vicky already, but say who you are, where you reside, and just tell us a little bit, we you know, about um, your home and who you live with to a certain degree. Don't give too much away. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so like Tracy said, my name is Vicky. Um, I'm 37. Um, I live in a small town called uh, Amptill, which is in Bedfordshire. Um, I grew up here, moved away for a little while and then came back to um, the town. All my family live here. Um, the house that I live in now is also where I currently have my home studio, which is called the Brow Studio. Um, and I've been set up here for the last three years almost. Wow, three years already. Yeah, I've got three little kids, three little girls. Keep me busy. They're seven, four and two. Try to remember how old they are. <laughs> Beautiful, lovely. And um, so what was your, I mean, we're going to talk about the why and the purpose and people's dreams, but just take us back to before you trained with Perk Cosmetics or maybe even a little bit before that. What, what, what were you thinking? Because you're going you're to tell us you're in another job. You were in some other form of job and obviously don't drop any names. But tell us a little bit about that job and um, and what it was that made you leave and come to the perk cosmetics industry. So um, I've always had a career before this in retail. I've worked in retail since I was a teenager. Oh. Um, worked for a few different companies, but stayed with the same, like a big high street store for almost the last the nine years prior to doing permanent makeup um and that worked absolutely fine for me until um I had my kids and then it just became um a very unflexible environment for me to work in um it became it, it just wasn't very family friendly for me um and I found that once um I needed to get my kids into childcare and my maternity leave had ended, that it was just really hard for me to get a work life balance right. Yeah. What how many were just to jump in, how many hours and were you full time? What was your what was your work schedule like? So before I had my eldest daughter, um, I had a 40 hour a week job, but actually I travelled loads with it that I could easily add an extra 30 hours on top of that travel time oh. where I just drive about all, all the time. And to be fair, I loved that job. It was great. Um, but the hours were really long. I would leave really early in the morning. I'd get home really late at night. Um, but that that was never an issue until I actually had um, my eldest daughter. And then when, once I went back and started doing that after I'd had her, um, it just wasn't feasible for me to work that many hours um, and have childcare mm. um, and get to spend any time with her or with my partner. Mm. Um, put a lot of pressure on him to do all the drop offs, the pickups, all of that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so then I did try and I asked for flexi time with that job, which was denied. So oh. I actually ended up having to demote myself into a, a job that I had already previously done, but it was a lesser role than what I had worked up to and a reduction um, in salary as well was that yeah I had to I had a deduction in salary um just so that I could work a part-time week so I ended up going going back to work in a three-day week which then the hours suited me mm -hmm. but actually the pay wasn't so good and it sort of brought me to a bit of a stopping point there wasn't right. really anywhere for me to to go with it I, if if I wanted to carry on with a career in it then I had to commit to the time, which I couldn't do. Um, 
but there wasn't there was nowhere for me to evolve in it I was just stalemate I was just stuck in that job it didn't it wasn't going to go anywhere for me so Mm. Um, it, it was fine to start with but it didn't take very long before I was actually I was bored of it there wasn't any there wasn't any progression for me yeah um, did that impact the, your life I mean like how you were feeling and imagine if it wasn't fulfilling you as much I mean did it impact you in any way like at home life or just did you get miserable or lose confidence or were you just just not happy just not happy um I just wasn't happy doing it it's 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 a very deflating to think that you know I've still got a long career ahead of me I've still got a long work life left and that it was that was that all I was going to do that I was just going to work there for three days a week and that's until the children left home (laughs) yeah 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 and then in that time I'd had my second daughter by that point as well which again after I'd had her they were the only hours that really suited me so I was I was almost sort of grateful to a point that I had those hours but I knew I wasn't going anywhere. There wasn't, you know, it, it made it almost harder having another yeah, child. Yeah. Because then I knew that actually both of them at some point would have to be in a childcare situation. Um, and that actually on in that job, I was never going to be able to afford to send them, to have them both in, in a childcare situation, right? And actually pay for both of them to yeah. go to an nursery yeah. or go to a childminder. Um, but the job wasn't worth it. Okay, okay. So... Obviously, you, you, you're unhappy and everything. And um, at what point did you, uh, what did you start looking for then? Was it that you had interest in perp cosmetics before and you just thought, oh, let's have a look into this? I mean, what what we know now your why. We know exactly now why you left. But um, what, what were you thinking at that time in terms of what can I do and what were you looking at? So my, uh, my partner is um, self-employed. He runs his own business. Um, and I sort of watched him go from almost a similar situation where he worked for somebody else, he wasn't very happy, he set up his own business and actually was very successful, but he was really flexible. He was, you know, he picked and choose what work he wanted to do, um, which made me think about working for myself and about doing something, um, doing my own business. Um, and then actually I had my own um I had microblading done on my eyebrows years ago and it was actually from talking to my technician and how she got into her job and how she set up that sort of made me think well actually this is this is a pretty good industry to get into it's good money um she was earning good money um I didn't question how much I was paying her because I was getting a really good job um so that's where I started looking into this business. Right. Um, and also it was still on a creative level, which is always the kind of job that I've actually had. Um, and I always, you know, I was always really um, interested in art. I was always good at art, um, those kind of things. Which So that's where it kind of progressed from. But then I started looking into it and the, yeah, the earning potentials and things like that. Did you at that point know um, how many days you'd have to work in order to be able to, you know, accommodate your bills and and have a decent lifestyle? Or was it just the fact that you were keen on the art? I mean, were you thinking about those things then? Or I can't quite remember what we covered all those years ago when we spoke, but I just wondered if you'd, if that was a motive, I know the the revenue would have been a good motivation for you and the creativity would have been a good motivation for you. But did you sort of, did you know that you didn't have to work as many hours? Did that sort of come into the equation? Yes, like definitely um, I knew that I could probably work less hours for the same money as what I was getting before. I knew that between me and my partner, what I used to get paid covered the bills. So that was always like the goalpost for how much money I potentially wanted to earn out of it. If I could get to that same level, I'd be happy with that. Right. Um, But ultimately, everybody wants more money for less hours. And I knew that I wouldn't have to work as many hours um, to earn the same amount of money. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And we'll explore that a little bit more as well. So you have made that decision. This is something pos- potentially that you wanted to go into. And then you obviously started doing, uh, for those those that are listening, you know, what was your, they'd be interested to know what how you went about researching. Um, so I did a classic Google search 
um, as you do. And I started looking into um, uh, what was required to actually do it in the first place. But also then I started looking into um, training places, how much this kind of stuff costs. Because at that point, I had no idea. I had yeah. no idea how much a course would cost, how long it would take me to um, do it, um, how quickly I, th- I could potentially earn the money back where was I going to actually work from? Yeah. So I started really looking into that kind of stuff, um, which is where I found you. Yeah. Was that um, on Google? Did you come across that on Google or was I it? I did come across you on Google, um, but your name had cropped up for me a few times um, previously when I, when I'd looked into it. Um, That's good. Yeah. 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 You've got a good reputation. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but we're, but yeah, I just started looking into it from there. I started making inquiries to a few different places, um, yourself included. Um, and yeah, it just kind of, mm. obviously, we then continued from there. Yeah. Did you have any, I mean, there's a lot of people that, you know, once they've done the research, they make that decision who they're going to go with and they phone and they book or obviously we, we spoke anyway. Um, were there any concerns or fears you had, even though perhaps everything was being ticked? in terms of what this industry has to offer. um, Was there any fears or any concerns at that point you had? Because there there will be a lot of people that sit on the fence about this industry for a while, um, and maybe your answers may help them with this. Well, for me, I think once I started really looking into it, um, and when we, it was when we actually spoke to each other that I realized that, like we had a taster session so I came and saw you prior to actually book it. You did, you did. You yes, came in for yes, one of the which, taster days. Oh, yeah, yes, I remember. I, I found massively helpful because right. I met you. Like, because then I had seen you and I had been to the academy. So I understood um, a bit more about you as a, as a person. Because, like, for me, it's, it's down to the person. I didn't feel like... I, I mean, I don't think anywhere else offered me a taster session and I think the biggest fear for me was that you know you, you're investing a lot of money in yourself but in somebody else that I didn't want to feel like I just wasted the money because yeah. ultimately I'd made the decision that this was going to be the next thing that I was going to do yeah and actually if it didn't work out it's a it's a lot of money that I ended up wasting yeah um, it is. and it I is. didn't get to where I wanted to actually be yeah yeah but, um that's yeah, good. I found with a lot of the other um, a lot of the other info that I got from other places, um, and what stood out for me with you, Tracy, was actually that um, you were offering me a one to one or like an, a, a two person only class. Yeah, which I didn't find that with anybody else. It was always like a classroom based situation, um, which you know may suit other people but for me I actually thought if I'm going to invest the money in myself I would rather that I had a one-to-one or even if there was one other person there I felt like it was more um more zoned in on my learning of what I was actually yeah, doing rather than being yeah. a number yeah I mean it suits some people some people like the buzz of a larger classroom they like to maybe join up and have buddies nothing wrong with that at all um but you know in my opinion in my experience as well as being a teacher for well, maybe coming up to 30 years now um, and also being on courses myself is I've always enjoyed the big classes but those big classes for me were were normally things where I'm already trained in and I'm just updating my skill a bit but in terms of it being right at the beginning when everybody is so brand new into this industry I think it's important that you have either um, a one-to-one with the um, trainer or at least two to one Um, and some places some very good places still have like you know maybe just two trainers but there's 10 to 15 people in a classroom Um, and I know from years and years and years of teaching that and I've taught in very large numbers in colleges and private academies, is that somebody or a few never quite get the attention that they need. And yeah. this is some, this is somebody's life. This is their livelihood and their future. Obviously, you had a vision of what you wanted for you and your family. So it, it's important that when anybody's considering is they maybe find out who their trainer is going to be. Do you think is that is that a good one to? Yeah, recommend? I felt like when when I had. Um 
um, when I had approached you at the academy about the courses, you were personally getting back to me, whereas I, I didn't feel like I was talking to the person that was going to train me at any other place. Hmm. Um, and that, that was quite a big thing for me. Okay. Um, because I, I didn't want to feel like I was just another number. I didn't want to feel like I was just going to be left to my own devices because, yeah. um, you know, you don't know until you start doing it if you're actually going to be any good at it. Mm. And mm. that's also a fear that you think, oh, God, what if I'm not actually... Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. This is what a lot of people say. And I think that's why the taster sessions, when we could do them at the Academy, we can't at the moment um the, the the time we're in now we're doing them online but obviously yeah. the time when you came we probably got you on the mat did we to practice and have a play yeah i had a go at yeah, it i thought so um, because actually at that time as well i hadn't quite decided if i wanted to do a machine course or if i wanted to do a microblading course yeah. and i had a go on both of them but the the biggest thing for me i mean that then did actually allow me to make a decision because ultimately before that point I'd never even touched either of these tools. So I did, you know, I didn't, I didn't know um, what, what it was going to be like, but it was being able to have a conversation with you. Um, and there was no, like, I didn't feel any pressure from you at all to then feel like I needed to book with you after that point. It was not, you know, I don't think you come across very salesy and I felt like I got quite a lot of salesy stuff going on with other places, which doesn't mm. really sit quite right with me like mm. you know I don't like feeling like I'm pressured into doing something mm. and I just didn't get that with with you like I just yeah I got a good vibe from you good you didn't um, feel, yeah and yeah you you're an actual person <laughs> you know, you're, you're a real per you know you're, an, you're a real person um and you're a nice person and I just like I just felt like I I knew once I had actually met you that um yeah, that you were going to be the one for me. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and do you know I... what? You've proved, you've proved me right as well, though, Tracy, because I've come back and I've done other stuff with you. You um, have, you have, haven't yeah. you? You did that most recently. So you started off with the microblading. Yes. And for a long time, um, and you've done, we'll talk about how well you've done with that and how you built up your business, being a mum with children and trying to get a balance. We'll talk about that in a second. But you did um, you did the microblading and then um, you came back recently, didn't you? When we yeah. were allowed to open up. Yeah, we've got a quick snippet. It's a quick snippet. Yeah. For a long time, you were like, oh, I love my microblading. This is my, this is my, you know, this is these, this is my bespoke um, brow. People come to me because of that, which is great. It's really great that you've got something unique and bespoke and people come to you for your pattern and your design. But there was some other you were exploring then about like the powdered brows, weren't you? And the ombre brows. And then you decided to um, to come back and do the digital conversion training from microblade into machine. Yes. Um, and I was really pleased about that. I mean, obviously, I was really, I'm really proud that you've done so well in your microblading. And it's you can tell us if it's given you what you wanted from the beginning. But now you've done the machine as well. You've got maybe a few more tools in your toolbox, would you say? Yeah, it's just, it's you know, again, this it sort of comes back to what I was saying about my old job. Um, you know, even though this is completely different, you've got, you, I've still got to evolve with it. I've still got to move on yeah. into like, into other fields. And I've, I feel like I've done the, microblading for long enough I'll still never give it up microblading is my thing it's your first um, love and it is it is my first love and it is what my clients come to me for um I'm I'm all about that style of brow um but I just think you know my kids are small mm. now they're not going to be small forever um there will be a time where I want to I'll be doing this all day every day um and it, it gives me other alternatives it gives me other options it opens the doors for me to do other things um, yeah. as time moves on, you know, it's not, this is something that I'm going to do for the immediate future, but looking yeah. into like the next few years by actually learning how to use the machine that opens up other pathways for me later on yeah. that I can then do further training later to then just add extra things to the services that I can do. 
Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And for those of people that are um, maybe listening to this, you know, microblading is still part of the perm cosmetic industry. It basically is another tool in your toolbox. It's a manual tool with a selection of needles that are combined into a blade and implants the color that way. And the machine, again, is is falls into the perm makeup, but obviously it's electrical machine and implants um, pigments slightly differently. Um, and the results can be very similar or very different. But the one thing I like about the machine is um, if somebody wants a combination brow, so you can be a bit more diverse and flexible and bespoke, maybe is the best word, um, in creating your brows that you can you can even use, you know, you can use a microblade if you want. If you've done microblading, you can use that to create the hair strokes and then use the machine to powder in between. Now, of course, you can powder, also known as shading, with a particular tool in the microblading realm. But in my opinion, my professional opinion, um, is that the machine is faster and it does a better result with that. So for you, Vicky, you're now starting to create a combination brow, hair strokes yeah. also with a machine, and yes. then you're powdering in between. And then you're also doing total powdered brows. Um, and that gives your clients, um, you know, not everybody wants hair strokes, do they? And not everybody's skin is suitable for hair strokes. So that gives you that um, option um, to be yeah. uh, more flexible with the type of client that you see so ultimately with that is if there's somebody that wasn't suitable for microblading just absolutely not suitable for that particular technique that client may go somewhere else so what it gives you now is two tools in your toolbox that yeah. you can um you can choose which one you want to give your clients that's right isn't it yeah I'm hoping that's happening for you i know you we've had the the lockdown again but did you get a couple of models done in that time i know you did them with i did us. yeah i did get a few done before um yeah before we've gone to the, into this, this current lockdown um which is good so i'm already getting a idea of what i can actually do with it good um but yeah i definitely feel like there's there's times where i could have really done with with doing a combination brow or um just having the option to do shading where you want where yeah. you want it to be. Because um, you're going to be creative, haven't you? I mean, at the end of the day, you don't yeah. have to be creative to come on the course. We teach you. You know, nobody yeah. taught you to. No, no, nobody was born with a tattoo with a microblade or a tattoo um, yeah. handpiece in their hand. So it's no different than somebody wanting to learn the piano. You're not, you've never done it before. So yeah. in the per makeup side, you know, you become creative. You put your own artistic. Um, look to it which you did of course with your microblading yeah and the longer that you do it you definitely get yeah you definitely get better at it better and better um, yeah yeah and uh, you know now I feel like I'm at that point that um I can create other styles of brows using the machine um that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise but perhaps I wasn't as confident at the beginning to yeah. actually do that in the first place I think I felt a bit safer with the microblade than I did with the machine to start with, which is kind of why I, I ended up picking it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas it's, now, yeah. Um, yeah. It's normal, perfectly normal to feel that way. Um, now you've got the machine, obviously you're still more confident with the microblading tool, but you will get more confident with the machine yeah. as well. And that's all to do with the training, isn't it? That's in terms of how you're, you're taught and also what type of support. Um, I jumped ahead a little bit there. I just want to go back to when you did the training on the microblading. Did you, um, you were with me, you had your pre-study, didn't you? You had quite a lot of pre-study yeah. to do. And then you came on a three-day course. Yes. And, and then you left with your kit, a full kit, and then you were set to do your models. Did you, how soon did you start? Um, well, let's go back to the training first of all. How did you find the training? Um, was, did, did it excite you? Did you, you know, I know when there's something new I'm learning, I get this sort of inside sort of tingling like excitement because I can't wait to start learning something. Um, how did you feel during the training? Yeah, definitely. I was definitely excited to get it started because I, I think that um, I prolonged it for a little while where I'd thought about it for quite a while but then also once I'd made the decision to actually do it I knew that I wanted to have a home studio um, but where I lived before I knew it wasn't suitable for me to set that up at right. my old property so at the time we were looking to move oh I didn't um, realize and that. it actually yeah oh. no it took a really long time for okay. us to actually move we found the house that we live in now but we it took us about nine or ten months to actually move in so it was 
it was paused for a while, but I'd already found you, I think, at this point. But I knew I couldn't start anything because actually I didn't have okay. anywhere to continue to do. I didn't have anywhere to do the training on the aftermath. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when I actually finally did get to do it, I was yeah really excited to get cracking and get going. Uh, but also, you're a bit fearful because, like I said before, you know you don't know if you you, you don't know if you're going to be any good at it. But by the time I'd come to see you, like you say, there was a, there's lots of free study. Um, so you get a feel about what you're actually doing before you actually do it. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing for me was actually the first couple of days, I think I was fine. But it's when you know that you're going to have a model come in, that you're going to have a real person <laughs> and you're going, to, you're, going to actually, you're going to actually do it, do something on their face that you start getting a bit fearful. But actually, I don't think that that was... I wasn't half as scared as I thought that I would be because yeah. you're, you're there. Like nothing scary is going to happen because yeah. you're you're there. You're not going to let me do anything. Exactly. Bad, yeah. Anything bad. Totally. Like nothing bad is going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you gain a lot more confidence after actually taking the training yeah. that you yeah. know you're capable of doing it. But that actually, it's not really going to go wrong because you're right there. Brilliant. That's really glad. To, I'm glad to know that you were. I'm, I can remember you were really good. You you just you took direction and you got on with it to to, yeah. to a certain degree. So I still yeah. remember like my first models. Like, yeah, I still remember that very first age that turned up mm. and, and let me do that because I think yeah. there were people are great coming in knowing that you've never done it before. Exactly, and they go, yeah, there's no problem, just crack on. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, we do. We do like tell the models that they are. You know, we, there's going to be complete oversight. We don't. We don't get you on there That's and then go definitely. off. And, yes, yeah. Don't work know, that I think way. that was my biggest fear about like a classroom situation. Yeah. That how can one person oversee what fifteen people are doing? Um, and when you you know when you ultimately you know you've got a blade on somebody's face, it, that that was a bit daunting for me. Yeah. But um, well, yeah. I, I think with those particular the classes, the big classes that um, that we know of um so the trainers may be superb trainers you know in a class it might be two trainers in a classroom of 20 um but there's always going to be a fallout this is the thing there's always going to be out of those 20 people probably a huge percentage a big percentage that will feel that they're not ready um that haven't had enough experience and then they will they just they just think this isn't for me when in fact if they had a bit more hand holding and a bit more um contact with those trainers um then then they probably would still be doing it now that's that's the yeah. sad thing anyway but i'm really glad that worked out for you but you mentioned about like you put a bit of a pause on doing your case studies was there any reason why you didn't decide i know you were wanting to work from home because that was going to just be right for you your family life yeah. everything and your husband could come home he can take over the children and then you start your clients at night don't you generally and then you do every other weekend and but we'll come back to that. But was there any reason why you didn't think, I know we would have discussed it, that maybe you could go and rent a room somewhere or, you know, a temporary or permanently somewhere local to you? So we did discuss that, actually. But mm. for me, I mean, I hadn't overly looked into that, to be honest, um, because in my head, I was always, the vision was that it was going to be at home. Mm. I think probably because I'd worked away, like, and I'd worked far away for, you know, long periods of time that um, I was just done with just travelling anywhere. Like, yeah. I just wanted it to be at home and I just wanted to be near the kids. And, um, you know, once you start, when you have kids, you think, oh, what, what am I going to do in an emergency? And I knew I was only, I'd just be right there, that I'd only ever be like 10 minutes away from them. Yeah. Um, so um yeah I think um the I didn't really look into it to be honest yeah. the whole like rent in the room somewhere yeah. um but to be fair I also didn't really know that it was going to take that long for me to actually yeah. move in yeah I can remember now it's all coming back to me now I yeah I wasn't that. expecting it to take that long otherwise I would have probably um I would have probably thought about that kind of that kind of thing I would have probably investigated that a, li- a little bit further yeah um but yeah, by the time I came to you, I had then already moved. Yeah. I've literally just moved. Uh, I think right, I yeah, moved, yeah, yeah. and then I called you immediately and went right. Oh, you were I'm ready to go. Sitting, I'm in my house now. Like I'm actually here, so I'm ready to put the train yeah. in. Yeah, I remember. It's all coming back to me now. I do remember. So, um, 
So you're somebody that doesn't have a website because you've been busy, you've, you've not got round to it, but you, you're very big on, you like the Instagram. Um, so people that maybe are going to work from home or maybe they're going to rent somewhere, um, what would you say, because you were obviously wanting to keep in control with how many people you work on each week and when you work on them. So I want you to tell us about that, but also um, in terms of what you did to find these clients. I mean, we would have talked about business and the course obviously includes some a little bit of that and to get you yeah. going, but you've been very successful and in demand with no website. So you don't, a lot of people think, oh, I've got to have a website or I can't start yet. I haven't got a website. But in fact, although it's great to have one, you didn't need it. So tell us a little bit about, first of all, um, how you started to find these clients and then um, how Instagram, if, if that is your best source, how you're getting the business from that. So um, when I first set up um, and obviously when you take the course, you need to have your case studies, mm. um, which most of my case studies were friends and family. Um, but I actually found, I think I actually did more case studies than yeah. I needed to. Yeah, you did. I actually found that I had a lot of interest um, you know, everyone loves a cheat deal. <laughs> but I did find that lots of people, <laughs> lots of my friends and family were really interested in having it done. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I did more than what I actually needed. I think you to did. You did it more, yeah. But because I'd done, I think I'd maybe done like 20, 25 people. But then they went out and then they told their friends and they told their friends. So to start with, it was it was quite a bit of word of mouth where I actually got the next person and I got the next person. I just tend to find that I got someone this out of somebody is. else, or I at least got inquiries out yeah. of someone that I'd already that I'd already done previously. Um, but um, yeah, I used all of my case study pictures for my um, my Facebook. I wasn't really on Instagram to start with, but I don't really feel like, well, do you know what? Maybe it wasn't I'm out of touch, but three years ago, I didn't feel like Instagram was quite as big as what it is now. Um, I definitely wasn't on it um, until, about, until about a year ago, I really started pushing on Instagram. Right, okay. Um, but I, um, yeah, I really just used my Facebook page. I put mm. all my inquiries through Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and through word of mouth and that seemed to work for me for a little while and then I got onto the Instagram and I feel like it's taken off a bit more mm. um, now I've got the two accounts going actually at the same time mm. but then I'm further along in the process now as well yeah. so then yeah. it is you know people know that I'm actually here now yeah it's a compounding effect isn't it as you said you've done people they've told people now they've told people and if you do a good job as you do it's a compounding yeah. effect it just goes on although you know I don't advocate that people just refer rely on referrals because because at some point those do dry up a little bit so yeah. you've got to look at marketing so obviously you've done your facebook to keep your exposure out there and then you've moved over to instagram and that's so do you get does do you find with instagram they contact you direct messaging on instagram or they call direct, you? direct messaging on instagram okay. i'll get it and then it, i've got it linked to my facebook as well so all my messages that's from both will come into one yeah uh, one separate account um I probably get about the same from each at the moment to be mm. fair um mm. and then I've, I've actually I think with the whole situation that's been going on with like since Covid's hit and stuff I actually think I've, I've um really focused on my local area and like my local community and I actually didn't realize how many people perhaps like literally on my doorstep didn't actually realize that I was here I think yes. because I lived somewhere else and then I moved here I yeah. had lots of clients from where I used to live which isn't that far away yeah um but I'd sort of neglected what was actually on my doorstep yeah. so I actually got into uh local business groups and Good. Brilliant. um yeah I um I follow all the local businesses that are actually around here and I feel like everybody's overly supportive to to each other's business we all realize that this has been like a tough year yeah. um but yeah i started to find that actually you know like i have clients from my street now which i didn't have a year ago yeah so um people know that i actually exist in my town like uh, in my immediate yeah. um, neighborhood rather than being too too far afield yeah, yeah. Um, i did i did advertise on a couple of places for online stuff um at the beginning um 
some of it worked some of it didn't but um yeah I did a few I did a few advertisements like that but um my main source of clientele comes from social media Mm, brilliant that's really good and just I might drop in here as well was this the time when you then had your third child so now you're working in Pope Cosmetics yeah you've left your job yeah yeah and um and you've got your hours and how you work it to fit around your children, which you'll tell us about in a minute. But was it at this point you had your third child? Or was it? Was, this... It was a bit before that that, was... I, that I had it. Yeah. So so like during the midst of moving and um starting a new career, um, I also had a baby like literally in the middle of all of that. So I came and did my training with you, and it was always it was always the plan. Like I always knew that I would like to have a third child um I just wasn't expecting her to come quite as quickly as what she actually did so I think we started training like maybe the February um and I fell pregnant in March oh was I wasn't, yeah yeah but I wasn't expect like I wasn't thinking <laughs> that, she, that, that I'd be pregnant for like a year yeah. so um so yeah whilst I had I kept my old job running so I still had my old job that I worked there three days a week then I've done my training with you and I do my clients okay. on the other like two or three days um, uh, when I wasn't at my other job. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, then I was pregnant. <laughs> and then once I actually qualified, I then took my maternity leave from my old job. Right. And then I started for, and then it gave me a bit more time to do this, uh, to yeah. do the permanent makeup. But the ultimate goal was always to build it up enough yeah. that I didn't have to return yeah. to the old job. Yeah. So I left with the door open, but yeah. I knew really like something terrible had to happen for me to not actually go yeah. back. I remember you saying that. I remember you saying those exact words that, you know, this is what I want to do. And something yeah. terribly would have to happen in order something for me to go back. Something terrible would have to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, really didn't want to go back. Um, yeah. I hadn't said that I wasn't going back, but I definitely, yeah. you know, I'd left the door open, but I didn't have any intention when I left. Yeah. Your heart but, had been stolen yeah. by Perk Cosmetics. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'd already got the taste for it there as well. Yeah. And I'd already qualified. Um, and, you know, I bought a house knowing that I was going to convert a room for a studio. You know, I'd already invested all of this stuff into it. It was, you know, it wasn't, I didn't go in it half hearted. I went full force that this, yeah. is, this is what it's going to be from now on. So, um, so yeah, luckily I had actually built up enough by the time it had got to my maternity leave finishing in my old job uh, for me to say that I wasn't going to return. Um, but yeah, there was a little break there where I had, I had my, uh, my third daughter. Um, so I probably had about, about five months off after once I'd actually had her. Mm. Um, but in that time I then converted a room. I converted my garage at, um, at my house and then now that is my studio. So actually then that gave, gave me some time. Is that the room you're in now? It's the room I'm in now. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if we can talk about, um, we just talk about, I mean, one of the important things I think for me when I did my course over 15 years ago was it was a lot of money back then. It was more than the, you know, treble the amount that most people pay now because there was very, only a few providers back then. And um, for me, it was like, how soon can I earn this money back? Like you, I had another job. I was still teaching in colleges. I was working in salons. I was just, I was still doing all the, I was just also working a bit in London. So I had all these jobs going on as well as my kids were young, not as young as yours are, but they were like early teens. But for me, it's like, this is a lot of money. Um, how am I going to, you know, and I, the thing is, I didn't have this money. Sadly, my mum died and left me a little bit of money. And I knew she'd be saying to me, Tracy, go and do it. If it's in your heart and you feel it's going to be right and it's going to give you the lifestyle you want, go and do it. So handing all this money over, um, I had confidence in that training provider. But how soon could I earn this money back? So um, I got all my case studies because I did eyebrows, eyeliner and lips. And I was I got them all finished and qualified in within three months. So for me, it was like, like, I need to get this money back yeah. to my mum, although mum wasn't around anymore, but it was like as if it was a loan. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I got mine and I was still doing the teaching and everything. So probably, I mean, I don't mind sharing mine was around 13,000 back then. That's, you know, 
Um, and it's not a lot of money because I did earn it back very, very quickly. I would yeah. say within a year it was earned back. I was able to cut back on my other jobs as well. Um, and probably within two years, uh, I've always been teaching, but probably within two years the other time. But for you, I mean, you don't have to share too much, but it was when did, I'm, I'm assuming this is the way your mind works as well. And I think it does for you. How soon did you like think I've, I've paid it back? Because obviously you've had like a bit of starting and stopping here. Yeah, so yeah. The house move and then the delay and then the baby and then the time off. But yeah. you know, did you pay it back within, you know, within a reasonable amount of time? Yeah, I did. I mean, obviously, yeah, like you say, I had the, I had a, a stopping point um, when I had my little one. So there was like five months where I wasn't really earning anything. Yeah. I I'd do like a friend maybe every now and again just to keep on top of it. But, um, you know, it was one person, every, I, I probably did two or three people in that in that five months and they were just yeah. friends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really started earning the money afterwards. I actually came back into it. Um, the timing worked out that it was all it was almost a year after I'd qualified. So I think it took me about five or six months to qualify. I worked for a few months, then I had the five months off. But when I came back into it, I came into it knowing that all those people from the beginning mm. would then be coming back from this for their yeah, top, for the top ups. Yeah. And you know what? Even from those people from the top ups was actually enough. Like that, that really got it going. Yeah, um, that's great. Yeah, it didn't like that for that first year coming back. And to be fair, that was only six months. Right. Okay. I only worked half the year. Um, I would have paid it back by then. Yeah. And actually, I even, you know, take this year for an example, um, even with COVID and all of this kind of stuff coming on, I've still come back and had the money that I know that I've got, I can yeah. invest back yeah. in my course for the conversion course. Yeah. Yeah. So even though I've still, this has only been a, a six month year, mm. I've still earned enough this year. Wow. So then have, have that spare to think, yeah, I can go, I can go and spend that and actually you can reinvest that in yourself. That's amazing. And that's yeah. what this industry does bring really, doesn't it? It certainly did for me. I mean, I did, I, I, my kids weren't as young as yours. So I was able to work the six days a week. You don't need to in this industry work six days a week at all. Yeah, see, I don't work six. Yeah. No. I don't work. But the opportunities days. were there for me and my kids weren't yeah. babies as such. So I could do that. I don't work those now, but you don't need to work those do you as, as it's proved that you've got your course paid back off. You've also had a sufficient money then to reinvest very yeah. very quickly really within two years into learning the machine as well and you've had time off as well so um in terms of just just briefly yeah, and I don't work full time either and, yeah and yes. I don't work full time like I'll probably work three or four days a week right okay um, yeah sometimes my day could be um two clients or um I also do um uh, highly defined brow treatments as well um so sometimes i might do um two microblading people or even one microblading person um plus uh, a hd treatment um on top of that some days i might just do yeah do the one client that's my that's that could be my work day but i'll only do that three to four days a week and i've still and that still earns me enough money mm -hmm. to have paid the course back to reinvest in myself mm -hmm and still only work half a year essentially so combined did you just work five days before or six days i couldn't remember what you said was it five days you worked my old job yeah oh so i was working five days i cut it back to three you cut and it really back to my three goal, yeah i cut it back to three but i could um if i do one client now um in a day that may take me two to three hours yeah um and i earn more money out of that client than what i would if i worked all day in my old job for five days a week. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I, well, I know that. I know that, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't get my students to be too high in their prices when they leave the courses because they still got to improve it. But yeah, I don't get them to, I don't want them to have the prices too low to begin with as well. Um, but uh, that's brilliant to know that. Yeah. Well, it's no brainer really, isn't it? When you think about it, I mean, it, you know, yeah. um, the, the mums, um, I mean, this, this, this success story isn't just for mums, young mums with children. It's for anybody, people without children, corporate people leaving had enough want to coming into it. So it's important that they get to hear and know that you can have a success story, not just only in quality of life. I mean, you've got your children that take up your time. Um, 
and, and you love it, you're a great mum, but somebody who perhaps is, isn't a mum um, or their kids are grown up, maybe like mine, it, it not only it alleviates um, the, the hard slog of five or six days a week um, working and allows them to still work two to three days a week. And if they've got a hobby or a passion for something else, I don't know, dogs or whatever they or yeah. whatever they like to do, you know, um, then they've got that free time available because yeah. it's not all about money. Of course, you know, there's nothing wrong in wanting money. There's nothing wrong in wanting to build up a good amount of money. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. It's not greed. As long as you have the passion, which you have and I have, for what you you're doing because if you don't have the passion for it then very quickly you get bored and that's when you find the people then decide not to do it anymore um so i think anybody that comes into the industry they've they've got to have a, a, a they've got to know why they're leaving or want to leave the job they're in haven't they really irrespective whether they've got children or no children or you know irrespective of age they've got to know what they're wanting to achieve out of this um as you did you just for you it was just more time with the children and and earning earning in one day what you used yeah. to have to work the whole week for yeah i mean the money's important like of course it's important and you know like it was it was an attractive part of getting into this of course it is it um, was for me yeah. yeah, but it's but do you know like I'd say it's just as important for me. It was about the the work life balance because it was all wrong before, um, and it would really stress me out sort of thinking about what I was gonna how I would work it. And yeah. um, yeah, when you when you continue to have children, then you um, it, it becomes uh, harder the more you actually have. And um, yeah, it was it was being able to be flexible. It was I just um, I work when I choose to work. Like now, I have like a more structured sort of um, uh, diary as to how I work because that suits me and my family. Um, but I can pick my kids up from school. I can take yeah. them to school. Yeah. Um, if something is uh, something important happening, if there's a family event or something like that. That used to be so hard for me before to get time off work. You feel guilty, don't you, as a mum? I mean, you shouldn't feel guilty because, you know, you're setting a good example to your children that you're working and, you know. Yeah. But, but you still have, I did anyway, I felt guilty that I couldn't be there because we know as mums, when you go to those things that your kids, you know, harvest day yeah. and yeah. sports day, they're looking for you, aren't they? They're yeah. looking for somebody yeah. like mum, exactly. dad, granddad, yeah. friend, exactly. you know, and their little faces light up when they see you and they go all oh, cool. Yeah. And I used to miss loads of that. I used to miss loads of that stuff in my old job. And actually, like, I wasn't even at, like, a really high level in it by the end of it. You know, it wasn't like... I had the most important job in the world, but I would miss out on loads of stuff just because it well, was just the it, it just wasn't family a family friendly industry for me to be in. It just wasn't um yeah, it it just wasn't working for me. Yeah, um yeah. and yeah, that's that's one of my biggest things now that like I know I can do anything else that I actually yeah. like. Any, anything to do with the family i know that i can commit to it i just you're, you're totally in control of it a lot of people have manual diaries still but whether it's in your yes. phone or whether you have a manual i have both you're totally in control of this aren't you there's, absolutely there's nothing else dictating apart from um maybe hospital visits and um your mum or grandma's birthday but there's nothing else in this diary really contr that's controlling you because you can tr control when you yeah. go on holiday you can control all the events and and that, as you said that's important yeah. I think it's important for for really even those without children you're in control of your life totally um you know there's many benefits of being yeah you can lost. choose you can choose when you want to work yeah. and you can choose yeah. how much yeah work you want to do yeah like i keep it at this level now i'm happy with what i'm doing now you know eventually Yes, my children will be older and I do I'd want to bump it up a little bit. I'd want to work a little bit more. Um, but at the moment, my how much work I actually have coming in is balanced to me still being a mum. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It sounds perfect. So um, 
what what is your vision then um because i think things can change because when people say set a five-year goal all those years ago we used to think oh five years we better write something down what's our goal in five years yeah. really realistically most of us look look at now from year to year however what you might have an idea i mean you obviously love this industry and i'd imagine you want to come and train in other things in time as well but what is your vision so the kids are like older school or you know what's your vision are you wanting do you think you might continue to work from home or could you imagine you opening your own clinic or you know none of them are right or wrong you know it's this whatever yeah. is, is your thing I mean do you ever think to about be honest, it? I think that like the idea of having somewhere else and having people work for me is lovely I love the idea of that but until I actually get to that point where I mm. think that's realistic um I'd, I'd have to review it at that time. At yeah. the moment, for me, working from home in my own studio um, really suits me. But I, I know in my head, I know that like my youngest, she's not going to start school for another two, three years. Yeah. So actually, I really, I yeah, the review is at that time where she actually goes to school as to whether or not I'd want to move it out of out of my house or not. Yeah. Um, they're, they're going to make know. you, they're going to want the room. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah but, you know, like... really, it would actually benefit me more if actually they had this room now and I actually worked somewhere else, but I don't want to do that because this is my room. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That when they get, when you've got three girls, wow, they're all going to want their own space, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. You might have moved by then to even something bigger. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd still like to think that, you know, um, I don't ever want, I don't ever see my, this going stale for me, yeah. uh, like wanting to do this, but I'm, I'm, full, I'm always one for, you know, now I've got into the digital stuff, I want to master that, I want to get to where I want to be with that before yeah. I would think about doing something else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as time goes on, then I know that there will be something else that I can get into that's within this industry still. Yeah. That's well, it does. There's, there's plenty more you can do, particularly now yeah. on the machine, you know. So a lot of people do ask me, where's the progress with this, you know? And, and probably at the taster session, I would have taken you through all, you know, because this isn't just it. This isn't just it. There yeah. are other paths that take you still working with people, still working on skin, still being creative, but it takes you into different avenues. So there's lots of opportunities here, but it sounds you, you're a great inspiration to um, all, all we're going to say that, you know, a great inspiration to all women, but particularly the mums that are at that stage in their life where maybe they've, they even the mums that have got teenagers, because my, my kids were teenagers when I entered into this industry, because I started thinking about what's for me now but yeah. for the ladies um you know um that have got the, the young children like you you're a great inspiration to be able to show them that this can be done as you know yeah. and you did it you know you've explained in this that you've done it you've done it the right way you did your research you know you went a bit deeper into it and then you planned when you could train you planned which room you're going to use or where you're going to work you planned you know um when when was the right time to leave your job because we don't advocate people leaving their jobs yeah away, you know yeah we don't advocate that at all um and then you, you've not missed working there one you've not missed working there but one you've I not don't miss work. I don't miss my old job at you, all you don't really miss don't. that and you don't miss like having to work what 40 odd hours a week to earn what you now earn in a couple of hours yeah which is fair to say it's not we're not making this up at all are we you can you know you can charge a reasonable amount you've got to look at where you live you've got to look at what level your skill is but you can charge a very good amount for this particular service you can, if, yeah you can earn a lot of money if you if you're looking at it especially at like an hourly rate you're like i'm earning a, a ridiculous amount of money on an hourly rate more than what i ever earned before yeah um yeah and to, really the longer you're in it the higher you can go with your with your prices yeah um, you know, you can, your earning potential becomes greater the longer that you're actually doing it for. Yeah, yeah it does. And uh, the money is important, but also you've got to have the love for working with people, haven't you? Because we haven't yeah. really talked about, we weren't going on to it too much, but the benefits here for the people, it's not just a matter of them coming in, I don't know, you know, getting a wax or and then off they go. I mean, there's great benefits with being waxed. But the benefits here for the clients can vary from low confidence, 
um, time saving, can't it? Um, obviously, new brows um, are going to enhance them. Or if you're doing the eyeliner training, the eyeliner is going to open up their eyes. If you're doing the mm -hmm. lips, it gives them more volume. But what do you find most of your clients? Um, you know, what what is it? Just that they look, they've lost their brows, they want new brows, and what sort of reactions do you find? Because I know the ones I get are lovely. It's lovely to see them smile. Yeah, most of most of my clients are um, sort of from that era where <clears throat> you massively overplucked because that tiny skinny brow was like all the rage. And then they've got to this point and they've never grown back or they've grown back really patchy or they grow in areas that they shouldn't be growing. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of my clients, it, you know, it's a massive confident boost. So some people just, I, I talk about this all the time to my clients, because some people just don't get it. That Some people just think it's, it's just eyebrows. But it's, it's, it's so much more than that. Like, it really is. And, like, I think that I always come back to, like, my, my own experience from having my eyebrows done. And they weren't terrible before, but they were they were pretty bad. Like I'd I'd really overcut them. And actually after having them done, it made me feel so much better. And I there's there's like a couple of pictures that I sort of look back to. That, yeah. You know, when you go on holiday and you haven't got any makeup on, you're just sort of <laughs> looking at yourself. Like I would never, I would never let anybody see any of my holiday snaps where I had like no makeup on. But I remember the first holiday I went on after I had my eyebrows done, Ooh. and I was like, Do you know what? I just looked so much better. Like I, yeah. I, I, but I felt so much better about myself. And I find that I, that that's that's what I'm looking to achieve for every single client. Yeah. That you that they leave and there's such a confidence boost. But then you know, within a couple of days that you've forgotten what your old brows even look like. They're, they're everything of the past, they've gone. Yeah. Um, it really makes a difference to how people yeah. look and feel about themselves. Yeah. Um, you're, yours are looking very nice at the moment, I have to say. Oh, do you know what? I just give them a little tint, actually, because yeah. I've got obviously do like the HD brows and stuff. Yeah, I've given them, I've given them an extra boost. Yeah. Mine are pretty myself build. at the moment. So people are looking at mine and thinking, oh, they're a bit light, but this is actually two years in. And I don't actually have much hair, believe it or not, on this brow, yeah. on the brows. Uh, and the brow hair that's there is blonde, so I'm in need of a bit of a tint on that. But this is two years, two years in. Um, if you train with the right person, train with the good products, then your clients aren't going to come back with any funky colours, are they? Um, yeah. so this is what it does. It gives you that longevity of not having to pencil your brows in so yeah the clients love it they do love it don't they absolutely and and it's not just a matter of um of making us feel good and confident there's also those people that maybe have autoimmunes there's people that um maybe have alopecia of course it will make them feel good and everything but it actually can deal with anxiety we can't make claims here but all i can say is the people that have no brows maybe my alopecia ladies or even the ladies with no brows just through to hormones or over tweezering you know a lot of them won't leave the house without these brows being drawn yeah. on and then that takes them lots of time to do that to get them yeah. right so it not only gives them back the confidence but they find that the anxiety um disappears as well so you know you're help we're helping them in many ways and you're helping them with a specialist this is a specialist skill and it will be your own design on it obviously you've got your own bespoke design i've got my own as well so people will come to if you decide to people decide to train in this after a time people will come to you one because it's you they like you they've got they've got that connection with you but two they like the work you do and once they get those brows then they tend to be they tend to be um um, long-term clients don't they yeah I mean I know you've it's been like three years or so for you but you're finding you're, they're coming back yearly now for a top up to maintain them yearly 18 months something like that so um how often are you finding yours are back yearly yeah or they can be even longer I mean it, it, you know it depends on the client doesn't it, it depends on um held. Yeah, on their lifestyle, all, so, all sorts of different things. But yeah, some people religiously will come back on that 12 month mark. Um, it just depends on what you want them to look like as well, really. Yeah. If you want them to be really crisp and really clean um, all the time, then they'll come back at that 12 month mark. But I do have quite a lot of clients that will leave it a lot longer than that before they actually come yeah. back. But they, they all come back. Yeah.
So it mm -hmm. might be a long period of time before somebody actually comes back to you. You know, mm -hmm. you'll have your clients and it does, um, mm -hmm. you know, you won't see them for a year, mm -hmm. but you'll still see them. They'll still, they yeah. still come yeah. back. Yeah. And the more you do, the more clients are do, then the more new clients are coming through the door. So then then they come back yearly. So you, you get a percentage of newbies and you get that percentage of those people yeah. returning as well. But of course, you know, um, you, there's other things you can do within this industry. Once you're trained, there's other other treatments you can offer them as well. So you could actually see them more often. Um, but it just depends if you decide to just stay as in per cosmetics or whether you intend to then bring in some more treatments that are related to the um the skill that you've got um it just really does depend on everybody's individual need and vision and goal like you've you've explained really well what your intentions were at the beginning and really what your vision is for the future you want to have your own clinic when the kids are a bit older you'd like to have your own clinic and um, run from that and i think it's important that people you know, start off with a bit of an idea of what, what they want rather than just thinking, let's see where it goes. Um, so um, thank you for sharing that. So um, just to finish off on, on a few things then. So um, it's always good for people that are, you know, that are thinking about this, sitting on the fence about it. Um, what message would you give them? Let's look at two messages in terms of um, you, you briefly went over at the beginning, but when they're starting to look on, you know, whatever means they are for a training provider, maybe what are the three or four important things that um, they should look for? For me personally, I wanted to personally talk to that person. I mean, you know, yes, it comes down to price for a lot of people. And ultimately that was something that I was looking at your price comparing these courses um but it's it's also what's going to work for you as an individual um what time are you actually going to be able to get there some people it's it's a set time and that's it there's no flexibility on that's the course that's when it's running that's when you've got to be there or you've missed it um or whether there's some some flexibility um but i definitely think that i got a much better vibe about the fact that I was going to go with you but I spoke to other people and I just didn't get the same there wasn't a connection with any with anybody else I think you need to actually actually talk to these people um, I mean I'm sure you can't be the only person Tris there must be you know everybody's going to absolutely a, I mean a, everyone's going to like a, a video thing at the moment aren't they because like we were saying you know I, I came to your test of course um your test uh, taster session and um, I, I got to meet you, but I just think you need to meet the person that you're actually going to do it with. You need to have a video conversation with the person that you're going to actually do it with because you'll get the vibe off of them if they're the right person for you. Yeah. So for the bigger companies, then if somebody decides to go, I mean, when I say the bigger, the ones that maybe do the bigger classes, then perhaps it's important that they get to speak to the trainer they're going to have because yeah. they will speak to staff on the end of the line that will give them a lot of information. But they're probably best to try and speak to the trainer and look at the trainer's work. Yeah, be, I think so. As well. Yeah, I think so. I also think as well, you probably gave me more information beforehand about what was actually involved mm. um than perhaps some other places because there were things that i hadn't necessarily thought about yeah. that actually didn't crop up until we had that taste session until we actually had a conversation it wasn't some there were some things that i hadn't really thought about um before we actually spoke to each other, but you were more forthcoming in giving me that information before we actually started, whereas I didn't get any of that from anybody else. I think the business side of it's important. I mean, obviously there's other business courses that people can do, but a lot of people are leaving a job. They've never been self-employed. They don't know about um, how they're going to find their business and really what they need to do in preparation before they go on the course. Yeah. So for me, if I was going to give somebody a tip is before you sign up for a course, make sure you know what preparation there is in order yeah. when you leave the course, because the worst thing to do is to leave the course and you're not prepared and the momentum wanes and the confidence starts to disappear. And then you just don't have that confidence to start working on case studies because you were, you're not prepared. You're not yeah. prepared. I think you need to be ready to actually just start immediately. Immediately. As on, soon as you can. On yeah. people, on actual people, you've got your set up or you've yeah. got, 
Um, you've got a room rented in prep that you know when you're going to have it. You've got yeah. people booked it. You've got people booked in before you've even finished the course. Yeah. So that you actually, because yeah, you can lose it really quickly. I think, especially at the beginning, because it's a little bit more nerve wracking. Yes. Um, you definitely get better. I found that I did a much better job on people at the beginning if I did two people one day, then I did two people the next day. Yeah. Um, and, you've got, you know, and your skills start to develop. Day, there yeah, there wasn't any, um, there wasn't a lot of in between. But also as well, I really just wanted to get the course done. Like okay. I, I was on a timeline by that point. So I needed to, I needed <laughs> to get it done. Like I needed to get qualified and know that, that I had done it. Yeah. Um, but even if you even if you haven't got a deadline, you almost need to give yourself a deadline so that you actually keep keep it flowing like that. Because yeah, if you go like even if you went a couple of weeks and you haven't had uh, you haven't had a case study in that time, yeah, you you almost get yourself a bit a bit nerved over the next time mm -hmm. somebody comes in. Whereas actually, if you're doing people sort of almost back to back, yes, yeah, a lot of work, but actually you you instantly like you see it you get so much better at it you do every yeah, client you get better and better. Fine, but better. You, yeah i would definitely say that you need to have it you need to have your, your setup sorted before yeah. Yeah. you actually take a course mm. because yeah there's no point of taking it and then doing nothing with it afterwards yeah that's 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 a good one and also as we're finishing off a lot of people don't actually understand how much support they need after the course when yeah. they do the case studies. So did you find that quite valuable that you had that you had that person you could speak to um, and get feedback and and help you with? Yeah, absolutely. And I also think, you know, like we've I did this course with you three years ago, but we've been in contact ever since. You know, even though it might, you know, I, I still know now that if I had um a particular scenario that I actually wasn't quite sure if I should or shouldn't work on somebody or um, something cropped up that actually I feel like I don't have I don't have the experience to answer the questions I still know that I could text you or that I could call you and I know that you'd still help me now mm. and this is like three years down the line but you I, I know that I could call you afterwards and you know or at any, any yeah. point in my training and that you were there to actually help me yeah. um I never felt like I was just left out there to just mm. do, just yeah. do what you, you know like because there's there's a bit of time when you finish a course to actually do any case studies and then get to the point where you're gonna take your assessment yeah. if you would have just left me to it in that point well I would have been all over the place <laughs> you know you need you, you need that feedback so yeah. you know really from any kind of course provider you probably need to find out what that part you know after you've actually whilst you're doing your case studies who's actually there to support you like who are you actually going to call because mm. you do need to call somebody there are going to be times where you, mm. you're not quite sure what to do mm. um, or you really need some advice or you need some feedback there and always will be somebody you need to know that there's somebody there that's actually going to answer your questions because it's all yeah. just to be left out there going, well, yeah, don't know if that was good or not. Yeah, no, it's it's so important the support system and most and most training companies offer it. But as as um, Vicky just said, you need to find out how is that being offered. Is it just a telephone call from between nine and five? Is there an online support system where you can go to resources and have a look? Which is now what we've we're just starting to do with our training. Not only have you got your manuals, but also there's going to be an online support system for the you know the general type of questions. Um, is there a Facebook page you can actually share with the community to ask them? There's all these elements of different types of support and i think it's important that people really really ask that and they will if they say is there is there post course support and they get the answer well yes there is they need to find out a little bit more don't they what type of support yeah, how, what is it? how long is it for because some will only give six months support and then you have to pay for it afterwards so not saying there's anything wrong with that but i'm just saying you need to just ascertain all these factors before anybody starts to um before they make the decision on who they're going to train with so that great they're really good tips thank you so much vicky i've really enjoyed this i know we've chatted before about this and i just knew your story would be a really good one it is such a 
success story from somebody being unhappy in where they're working, um, probably carrying a lot of stress from the guilt and the demands um, of, of being mum and also wanting to be around for your children. So you've achieved really what you set out to do, didn't you? Which is which is where possible a life life and business balance you know it's yeah. not always 50 50 but where possible you've managed to achieve that um you've accelerated in your skills um you've paid your course back you've been on another course you're earning good money per hour compared to what you would be earning in um you know five days so you're a great success story and i'm really really proud that you've um you've shared this with us and hopefully people will watch this and see how well you've done for you so i'd love um I'd love for you to maybe just tell us your um, Instagram and your name again. And also what we will do on the end of this video is we will put like your, um, we will put the Instagram on there um, and maybe one or two of your pictures so people can see um, what you, what you do, what, you know, what you've created because people, people want to aspire to other people. They, I'm hoping this has inspired them and I'm hoping they want, they will want to aspire to what you've got, whether they're mums with children or whether they're just ladies or guys that are just wanting to leave their job and just know that there are such huge opportunities in here. So, um, that was a very long, very, very long. Thank you there, Vicky, but thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure. And um, anything else you want to say before we go? Or we're, we've been on here like well over an hour or so. so. Oh, I know. Well, do you know what? It doesn't surprise me because both me and you both like to talk quite a lot, don't we? So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's been a pleasure, Tracy. I'm really pleased that um, that I chose you and I chose oh, Signature. I, I, yeah, I really am. Um, one of the best decisions that I ever made. Um, and, yes, yeah, it's definitely... Um, yeah, it definitely worked out well for me. Brilliant. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And what's your Instagram handle? Uh, so I am the.brow.studio.amptil. Um, Amptil is in Bedfordshire and it's the Brow Studio um, on Facebook. You've got your branding there. We'll quickly show people. Got my little branding. branding here. Yes, yes, yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Again, it's been an absolute pleasure. And no doubt I'll be speaking with you very soon, as we always do. <laughs> Yes, we do, don't we? Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Tracy. That's all right. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.